Youth Devotions of the Week with Becca. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Youth Devotions of the Week. I mean, I love how much you're loving that theme tune. I would say it took me hours to come up with, but I definitely couldn't. But I'm glad you're loving it. Welcome back, and we are on our fifth and final episode of this series but do not fear do not be afraid we're gonna come next week with a whole new series um, so if you have any suggestions of topics that you particularly want to look at then please leave them in the comments down below or send me a whatsapp or an email my details oh. but I just want to as always thank you so much for coming around, for being in my living room, I know, and, and getting involved and chatting to me about it and sending me pictures of the lists that you'd made all those weeks ago. I know this time is full of uncertainty and sometimes we feel a bit out of routine, but I've really enjoyed chatting to you. I know it doesn't quite feel like a conversation, but I've really enjoyed putting this content out there for you. I hope you found it useful. Oh. Cooper's gone. Bye Coops. Anyway, let's get going. So this week we are continuing week five. We're ready. So over the last few weeks we've looked at various things that we might come up against. We looked at putting our armour on and knowing when to fight for battle and when it's time to retreat and slow down and be silent. Um, but today we're going to look at this idea of perseverance. And I almost feel a little bit ironic doing this session because, and I'm not going to say I'm not very good at this because I've said it for all of them and it's true I'm not very good at it. But in general, the most resilient people and the people who are most willing to persevere when times are hard, in my experience, are young people, are you lot. You are incredibly, incredibly gifted at perseverance. And actually what I found is, and I'm not, I don't want to undermine uh, those of us who have been finding this time hard, but in general, as a blanket rule, I found that actually teenagers, you lot, young people, are the people who are handling and dealing with this lockdown situation the best. And I just want to commend you for that before we get started. For some of us, the thought of persevering can feel quite overwhelming and different seasons in our lives will naturally bring about different challenges and different obstacles. The season we're in at the moment, this lockdown, is bringing about lots of different challenges for us all. And the challenge that comes with that is how can we, as followers of Jesus, be people who focus not necessarily just on the obstacle, but on God during that time. And I was thinking of examples of obstacles that we might be coming up against and the virus and everything that that entails is an obvious one. But I was thinking also a little bit about this idea of open doors, not literal open doors, obviously we're not talking about doors, but this whole like when we ask God to open a door for us and it doesn't open or when we ask God to bless these plans that we've made for ourselves. One of the questions that came up in the Q&A a few weeks ago, if I've worked out how, it's probably popped up here or here. I doubt I've worked out how so it's probably not. Well done to me if I have though. But a few weeks ago I did a Q&A and one of the questions, which was a brilliant question, was where do you see yourself in five years time? And I found that really hard to answer, as you'd have seen in the video. Not necessarily because I don't know the answer, because I know exactly where I want to be in five years' time. But knowing that the reality is, the times in my life where I've strategically planned what I want to be doing, when I've done that and asked God then to say, God, this is my plan, can you bless this for me? Most of the time, he's shut that door and opened a completely different one. That's how I ended up in youth work. And it's really easy for us to become confused or frustrated maybe when the doors we want to be opened aren't and the doors we want to be open are shut. And the challenge is, isn't it, is to not lose sight of the fact that maybe these doors are closing for a reason. And sometimes a closed door actually, although it doesn't feel like it at the time, in the long run, in the bigger picture, it's exactly what we need. 
but actually sometimes our personal experience of suffering, sometimes the difficult things we've been through, equip us for the things that God has planned for us, the people we're going to meet, the conversations that we're going to have. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 says this, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And that's not saying, is it? God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all the good things that happen at the times that you want them to be happening, you'll have all that you want. He's not saying that, is he? God, who is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, at all times, the timing we wanted for those things or the timing that God put out for those things, having all that you need, but one. You will abound in every good work. Some of us, we're struggling at the moment. For some of us, we're in a period of struggling even before this lockdown all started. And for some of us, that's actually the reminder that we need. The truth is, he will deliver us out of the other side of our pain, out of our suffering, our confusion, our frustration, our boredom. And he'll reshape those situations to reflect more of his image. We will be able to use the difficult times that we've been through, that we're going through, and in reality that we're going to go through, to bring about his glory. Often when I think back to the times in my life that have felt the darkest, that have been the most difficult, where I feel like I'm buried a bit underground. Often the thing I find hardest in those situations, yes, is what I'm going through, but it's also that sense of things feeling hopeless feeling like there's no way out, there is no light at the end of the tunnel, there's no hope. God is writing a story in your life and part of that story will bring hope to others and maybe it's going to strengthen your relationship with him. I know for lots of us this lockdown has given us a chance, an excuse, a reason, a less busy schedule which means we're able to engage with God more. So I want to encourage you to be spending time with God and there's so many different ways that you can do that and I know for most of you, you know what they are and are doing them, which is amazing. But I want to encourage you this week to not just spend time with God reading your Bibles or praying, all those things are brilliant, but to also spend time telling God what's on your heart and what's really on your heart. Because I don't know about you um, and whether you've read the Psalms, but the Psalms, they're a book in the Bible, they take up a big chunk. Psalms are normally sung. I'm not going to sing any of them to you, don't worry. Psalms, 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 Psalms. But the Psalms are songs and poems written by people to God, right? And sorry about that, my camera died. Um, we've upped our game, you'll be pleased to know, and I'm actually filming on a camera rather than a phone. And the battery keeps dying, so sorry if this whole little setup's changed, um, but we will continue. So I don't know if you know, but out of the Psalms in the Bible, 40% of the Psalms are Psalms of lament. Now, what does lament mean, I hear you ask? Luckily, I've taken to Google, and lament officially means a passionate expression of grief or sorrow. I find sometimes uh, being in the Christian space is quite hard when I'm going through tough times because all our songs that we sing on a Sunday morning all about how amazing God is and how brilliant we're feeling and how close to him we're feeling and sometimes youth might not be a space where we can express how we're really feeling or in our home groups or in our family setups but the Bible is full of people telling God how they actually feel so I really want to encourage every one of us to spend this week talking to God about what's actually going on and to be asking him to help us in our perseverance when times are tough. Because God is writing your story and I truly believe that it's a story that's gonna help change this world. See you soon!